Okay, so get this. We're talking about a deep sea mystery today. A sound, a really weird sound called the bloop. Uh-huh. And it's 1997, and scientists are listening in the Pacific Ocean way down deep, and suddenly they pick up this massive sound, this yeah. ultra-low frequency sound. Right. And it's not just a whale call. This was something different, something way louder than that. And it was picked up on sensors that were thousands of miles apart. Over 5,000 kilometers, actually. Wow, 5,000 kilometers. Yeah, to give you a sense of scale, that would be like hearing a sound made in London all the way over in Chicago. Wow. That's why. Okay, so what were they even using to listen that far underwater? Hydrophones. Hydrophones. Yeah, essentially underwater microphones. Okay. Believe yeah. it or not, these were initially used during the Cold War. Really? To track Soviet submarines. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, these ears of the ocean are really fascinating. They can pick up all sorts of underwater activity from earthquakes and volcanic activity to the calls of whales. So after the Cold War, then they repurposed these hydrophones for science. Exactly. And thankfully so. Yeah. They're really valuable. They provide us this incredible window into this hidden world of the deep ocean. Yeah, for sure. And a sound as loud and unusual as the blooper. Well, let's just say it definitely caught their attention. Yeah. I bet. So what did it actually sound like? So imagine like this deep resonant sound that starts low and then gradually rises in frequency over about a minute. Huh. It has this almost eerie quality to it, especially considering the sheer scale of it. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, even released recordings of the bloop sped up so that we could hear it. I actually listened to a recording before we started. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sent chills down my spine. Yeah. It really does make you think of those old sci-fi movies with, like, creatures emerging from the ocean. Yeah, the human imagination does tend to run wild when it comes to the unknown. So speaking of running wild, did anyone actually think that the bloop was... You know, a giant sea monster. It's funny you should ask that because initially even some scientists entertained the possibility. Really? Yeah. Especially back in 1997 when we knew even less about the deep ocean than we do now. Right. The way that the bloop's frequencies changed over time, it's what we call its sound signature. Mm. It did resemble some marine animal sounds. Okay, I have to ask, what kind of creature are we talking about here? Well, the problem is the sheer power of the bloop would require a creature far larger than any known whale. I mean, we're talking colossal. Mm. To give you an idea, the sound traveled for thousands of kilometers. Right. The amount of energy needed to produce that is unheard of in the animal kingdom as we know it. So if it wasn't some gigantic sea monster, what was making this incredible sound? Well, the most widely accepted theory is actually far less fantastical, but still fascinating. Okay. A massive ice quake. An ice quake, like an earthquake, but made of ice. Exactly. Okay. Ice quakes or cryoceisms happen when large masses of ice, like glaciers or ice shells, fracture and move. Uh -huh. And these movements generate a tremendous amount of energy which create these powerful sound waves that can travel vast distances through the ocean. Right. And remember, sound becomes a whole different beast in water. It travels much farther and loses less energy compared to air. So sound in water is less like a shout across a room and more like a whisper that travels across a still lake. That's a great analogy. Okay. And when you're dealing with something as massive as a glacier breaking apart, well, that whisper can become a roar. So we've got these massive ice sheets breaking apart, grinding against each other, sending out these powerful sound waves. Right. How can scientists be sure that the bloop wasn't just, say, a really, really big ice capping event? Well, that's where the science of underwater acoustics gets really impressive. Okay. Researchers have actually gotten quite good at identifying the unique sound signatures of different ice events. Really? Yeah, think of it like every ice quake having its own fingerprint. So they can tell like a gentle rub from a catastrophic break just by listening? Precisely. The way the sound waves travel, the frequencies involved, even the duration of the event, it all provides clues about what caused it. Okay. And when researchers compared the bloop's profile to recordings of known ice quakes, particularly from events in the Antarctic region where calving and rubbing occur frequently, they found some very compelling similarities. So they basically built a library of ice sounds, and the bloop was a match. Exactly. And some amazing detective work. While the bloop's sheer scale was unusual, its acoustic signature pointed toward an ice quake as the most likely culprit. So case closed, then. Well, not so fast. Uh-oh. And this is where it gets even more intriguing. All right. You see, while the ice quake explanation is the most plausible, the deep ocean is still a vastly unexplored frontier. Okay, here we go. I knew there had to be a but in there somewhere. What else could it be? Hold on, hold on. I'm not saying there wasn't ice. Okay. It's just that we know there are creatures down there. 
entire know. ecosystems even that we know very little about. So there's still a chance, however small, that the bloop could be something else. It's important to remember that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Right. And as of now, all signs point to ice. Okay. However, that sliver of doubt, that element of the unknown, is what makes exploring our planet so captivating. Yeah, I hear you. Even if it's not some gigantic undiscovered creature, the fact that a sound that loud could travel thousands of miles underwater, that's mind-blowing. It really makes you appreciate the sheer power of nature, doesn't it? It does. We tend to think of the ocean depths as a silent, but they're actually teeming with sound. From the rumbles of underwater volcanoes to the chorus of marine life. It's a symphony down there. And sometimes, like with the bloop, that symphony includes a really big, mysterious bang. Exactly. But jokes aside, the bloop reminds us how much we still don't know about our own planet. What else is lurking down there in the darkness? What other mysteries are waiting to be discovered? Now, those are questions I want answers to. It really makes you think. It does. And, you know, here's something else to think about. We've been talking about the bloop as this isolated mystery. Right. But it also kind of highlights a bigger issue the impact of climate change on our oceans. That's right. We can't ignore that. Exactly. As our planet warms and glaciers melt at a faster rate than ever, these massive ice shells are becoming less stable. Right. We're already seeing an increase in ice calving events around the world. So we could be hearing a lot more bloops in the future. It's definitely a possibility. The bloop, as unsettling as it might seem at first, could be a harbinger of things to come. Wow. A sonic warning about the changes that are happening in our oceans. That's a pretty sobering thought. It's a good reminder that we're still learning so much about our planet, and some of those lessons are more urgent than others. Absolutely. Every time we explore a little deeper, listen a little closer, we gain a better understanding of this planet. Yeah, and it makes you realize that the ocean isn't just this vast, silent expanse. It's this dynamic, living world full of sound and fury. And mystery. That's right. Who knows what other secrets are hidden down there waiting to be discovered? Maybe someday it'll be you making those discoveries. You never know. That's the beauty of science. There's always something new to explore. I think that's the perfect note to end on. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us. Until next time, keep exploring.